Russia is now talking to Iraq. They're going to do some bombing and of ISIS, which, frankly, I think is a great thing. Let Russia bomb ISIS. What are we talking about? They want to bomb them. Let them bomb them. Bomb the hell out of them. No, bomb them. And I said that, and somebody said, oh, that's controversial. A couple of the countries said, no, we will not speak to Russia. We will not talk to Russia. And we will go and confront Russia. What, over Syria? We're going to have to, we're going to start World War III, right? Give me a break. You know, when I first made the statement, they were hitting our so-called allies that we have no idea who they are. You know, you have Assad. He's a bad guy. And we're fighting for people. We have no idea who they are. And then you hear... We're going to take in, so originally I heard 3,000 people from Syria, right? And then the next time I was on television, it was 10,000. I said, oi. The next time I hear, we're taking in 200,000. They want to take in 200,000. To bring these 200,000 people in, 200,000, 200, that's like an army. Ah, maybe that's it. Because I look and I see the migration, which is sad. But then I look and I keep looking. I said to my wife the other day, I said, you know, I don't see too many women there. I don't see that many children. I see really strong looking men. This could be one of the great Trojan horses. This could make the Trojan horse look like peanuts. Okay? So this is something you guys keep hearing me say. Keep hearing me say. They're marching us into World War III. Here you go. Here's a political, uh, I don't know, presidential candidate, I guess we'll call him. Uh, I think he might be listening. I think Trump might be listening to me because, uh, you know, I keep saying this is what he should be doing is talking more about the war stuff because uh, we get a lot more supporters. He's, he kind of acts like he's anti-war. I don't believe that he is for one second. Again, he'd just be the next war criminal in chief. But you know, this stuff about, you know, we're going to start World War III. That needs to be said over and over again because that's what they're pushing for. That's the direction we're headed. That's what they want is this never-ending battlefield that they can profiteer off of. And you know it. And the only way we stop it, the only way it stops, is if you say, one of these days this war is going to end. I'm going to do everything in my power to make it happen. That's the only way. If you, you say that, you're the only one that can do it. One of these days this war is going to end, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make that happen. And I've been trying, trying, trying to build a Mox army forever. It's up to you guys. Stay cool. Donald Trump is back on the campaign trail today, addressing a crowd this afternoon in Waterloo, Iowa. The Republican presidential frontrunner promised he isn't getting out of the race. And he had plenty to say about Russia's military moves in Syria, his promised wall along the U.S.-Mexican border, and all the latest polls. I want to thank you. This is amazing. I know the fire marshal had to send a lot of people outside, unfortunately. Florida, I was at 21. I went up to 28. We're killing everybody. We're winning by many, many points. And don't forget, you have a sitting senator and an ex-governor in Florida. You know, when you're 28, 29, that's a lot. You know, when you think you have 16 people in the race, you had 17, one did sayonara. So you have 16 people in the race, and when you get almost uh, 29%, that's pretty good. Pennsylvania beating everybody. Ohio beating everybody, 23. We're beating the governor of Ohio, who's a nice guy, by the way. I don't know, maybe there's a mistake, because Actually, the governor of Ohio is a quality guy, and he's doing a good job, but we're beating everybody by a lot in Ohio. I'm not going anywhere. You better believe it. He knows. He knows, Trump. You know. You've got the same mentality, right? We're not going anywhere. But, you know, I watch the politicians. They're at one. He's at one. No chance. In fact, I think he's going down to zero. Would you get out? Absolutely not. We're in it to the end. Now, you know he's going to cancel out next week. That's called Politico speak. When you talk that way, it's really easier because there's no, no story. So if he would have said, well, I'm thinking about it, I'm not doing well, you know, of course, nobody would have written that story anyway because nobody cares. By the way, I'm funding my own campaign. I'm spending a lot of money, not as much as I thought because frankly, I'm getting so much publicity, I don't have to advertise so far, you know, right? We had a poll with the African-Americans where I was at 25%. That's a huge number for a Republican primary. Somebody said, if you actually got 25% of the African-American vote, the election's over. It's over. You win. Russia is now talking to Iraq. They're going to do some bombing and of ISIS, 
which frankly, I think is a great thing. Let Russia bomb ISIS. What are we talking about? They want to bomb them. Let them bomb them. Bomb the hell out of them. No, bomb them. And I said that, and somebody said, oh, that's controversial. A couple of the countries, no, we will not speak to Russia. We will not talk to Russia. And we will go and confront Russia. What, over Syria? We're going to have to, we're going to start World War III, right? Give me a break. You know, when I first made the statement, they were hitting our so-called allies that we have no idea who they are. You know, you have Assad. He's a bad guy. And we're fighting for people. We have no idea who they are. And then you hear... We're going to take in, so originally I heard 3,000 people from Syria, right? And then the next time I was on television, it was 10,000. And I said, oi. The next time I hear, we're taking in 200,000. They want to take in 200,000. To bring these 200,000 people in, 200,000, 200, that's like an army. Ah, maybe that's it. Because I look and I see the migration, which is sad. But then I look and I keep looking. I said to my wife the other day, I said, you know, I don't see too many women there. I don't see that many children. I see really strong looking men. This could be one of the great Trojan horses. This could make the Trojan horse look like peanuts. Okay? The next president has to be great. Thank you very much. The, no, no. No. Iran. So you have a guy saying, death to America, death to America. We have people signing. We have a, a guy who's on a bicycle in a bicycle race, and he's our chief negotiator, breaks his leg, walks in with crutches. They say, what a jerk this guy is. <laughs> we give Mexico billions of dollars, billions of dollars. But the politicians say, like I'm some kind of a baby, you can't ask for that. How ridiculous. Why would Mexico ever think of paying seven billion to build a wall and i say because they're making 45 billion dollars a year you idiot we're doing so great in iowa and i just want to thank all of the people and i'll be here a lot over the next four months and beyond by the way and we're going to do something really it's going to be a beautiful thing to watch this is not just like people getting together this is a big movement that's going on all over the country and you know what it represents we're getting the biggest crowds the greatest people i just want to thank everybody and I will see you soon. I'll be back very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the flavor of what uh, Donald Trump is saying on this day. Uh, let's bring in three members of our political team. Our CNN political commentator, S.E. Cup, Our senior legal analyst, Jeffrey Tubin. He joins us once again, as does Republican strategist and CNN political commentator, Anna Navarro. Uh, guys, hold on for a moment. We have a lot to discuss. Not only Trump, but there's a lot of other developments happening right now. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.